to A Little Box of Paints. My name is Sophie, and this is an art activity for all the uh, older artists at home who are looking for um, different ways to pass the time while they're staying safe at their houses. Um, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you a simple kind of meditative drawing activity that you can do on your own, and I will also be sharing a delicious cocktail with you as well. Um, so the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna talk a little bit about this activity and the cocktail, and I'm gonna show you how to get started, and then I'm actually gonna speed up in time-lapse while I do the drawing. So um, if you feel confident, you can get started right away, or if you wanna take a bit of time to actually see how I create the meditative drawing, then you can do that too. But the idea with these videos is they're a little quicker. Um, the videos that I do for families with kids, they take a little bit more time, of course, but I'm hoping that uh, these will be much faster, so you know, I'm not taking up too much of your time. Um, so the materials you're gonna need today are a piece of paper, okay, and a marker of some kind. I'm gonna use a Sharpie, love Sharpies, but any marker would work okay. Um, if you're a little nervous about drawing, many of us are, you can always do this in pencil first and then go over your pencil drawing with marker and erase it after. Just keep in mind, if you're using a lighter color marker, you might be able to see the pencil underneath. If you wanna use a ruler as well today, you can, but you don't need to. Okay, um, so the cocktail that I'm gonna be talking about is a gin and tonic, shocker. Um, I love gins, I like different flavors of gins. I like mixing gins with tonic or with uh, just a plain sparkling water as well. Certain gins, it's really nice to get that flavor out. Um, for this gin, it's called Panda Gin and it is a organic gin from Belgium here. That's why I'm starting with it. I do live in Belgium. I have mixed my tonic today, which is some simple fever tree uh, Indian tonic water. Okay, really nice basic tonic that you can use. I put a little bit of ice in my cup and I actually froze some lemons ahead of time because for some reason I thought about this and it was obviously a great idea and I'm glad I did. Um, I froze some lemons ahead of time and I popped a couple slices of those in here, okay? Um, I've also got my little straw here. It's actually a bamboo straw. I'm a big fan of these. I've had them for over a year now and they are still in great shape. Um, this is the company, Bamba, all right, that, I'm, that I bought them from, from. I'm pretty sure I got these off Amazon and they are amazing. There's a ton of them in here. And it's great, it means I'm not tossing a bunch of plastic into the universe, okay? Um, so this specific gin, Panda Gin, it's a premium gin that's distilled and bottled here in Belgium. It's 100% organic and it claims to be the uh, first gin worldwide to be lychee based. Um, there's lots of ingredients. I will say it's a really kind of florally gin. So if that's not your thing, you might not be a huge fan. I will say it took a couple drinks, not today, first one. Um, it took a couple drinks for me to get used to this gin and uh, kind of knowing what I like to mix it with. It's not the kind of gin I would mix with my normal uh, lime and cucumber, okay? Um, but it's got cherry, orange peel, basil. Um, there's some juniper berries, of course. Um, there's no additives and no added sugar, um, but it's nice. I really like it. So cheers. We're gonna do a little bit of art today. Oh yeah, delightful. Oh, so good, so good. Um, and yeah, hopefully you're enjoying a cocktail too while you do this, or a beer, or wine, or whatever, Diet Coke, glass of water, whatever you like. So we are gonna get started. Um, the trick with this today, guys, is uh, you wanna make sure that you protect under your paper with a bit of scrap paper, because if you're using Sharpie Marky, Sharpie Marky, geez, I only have one sip. If you're using Sharpie Marker, um, odds are you're gonna get it on yourself and you're probably gonna get it on whatever surface you're working on. So make sure you protect the surface. Old newspaper works fine, okay? Just to give you a quick preview, um, this is the type of art we're gonna be producing today. You too can do this. All it is, is lines. Just lines drawn in a certain way, okay? I find it very meditative to work with lines and simple designs. Um, I'm hoping you will too. If you have color paper at home, you can do something with a bit of color paper as well. I really like the way these hills turn out. I saw this project ages ago on Pinterest and I cannot for the life of me remember who I saw it from. So if this is your design originally, thank you. I use it all the time with my students and I've probably drawn about 50 of these myself. I find it super relaxing. Okay, so just putting it out there in the universe. Someone else created this first, but I'm making it my own now to share with you. So um, to start, I've got my paper. You can work either landscape or portrait style, whatever works for you. And um, if you want to start with a nice little frame around the edges, I think it kind of cleans it up a little bit, especially if you want to put it in a frame when you're done. 
by the end of all this, you may see a lot of my artwork in these frames behind me. <laughs> um, so you can take your ruler if you have one and you want to use it and maybe measure out just about a centimeter around the outside frame of your paper. Now, I don't actually measure a centimeter. I've been gifted with the gift of being able to tell if a line is straight and if things are even. It's a very special gift. Some may say it's my superpower. Um, so I'm not going to do that, but you might want to. Okay, so I'm just bringing it all the way to the edges here. I'm gonna actually turn my paper this way. And there we go, I've got a nice little frame. All right, so I'm gonna get started and then I'm gonna actually do the time lapse with you, all right? Basically to start, you're gonna wanna have some really nice sort of curved, um, almost like rolling hills here. Now the trick is to go nice and even from the edge of your frame all the way to the other edge. You wanna avoid having small gaps between your lines, okay? So I'm gonna make a few lines here. I'm gonna try and make this not exactly the same as the one I just did. I'm gonna jazz it up a little bit. I mean, I find I've done so many of these and then they all kind of end up looking the same in the end. It's okay, whatever, it's the experience, right? All right, I've got my mountains set up here and I've left space up top for the sky. That's actually my favorite part to do. Um, but one thing I'm gonna to wanna to do first is I'm gonna actually go in here and I'm gonna double up these lines that separate um, the mountains, okay? The different hills, be mountains, hills, whatever. Um, because if you leave them as a single line, you are going to have a little bit of trouble later telling which one is which, because we're gonna add a ton of lines. So this is where you can kind of double up and then color it in so it is a noticeably thicker line than the lines you're gonna draw after. One thing I do wanna mention is I always like to have a backup marker around. Okay, I've actually got two Sharpies with me here. And like 50 over there. Um, so I think it's a good idea to maybe have a backup marker around, okay? Especially if you are sitting down to do this in a nice quiet place or maybe taking it with you out onto your balcony or your backyard if you're fortunate enough to be in a place where you have an outdoor space, okay? Um, so I'm just filling in these lines here. Just a couple more. And take your time, okay? I've done this project with my students before and they love it. Some of these kids, grade five, grade six, I've done it grade seven and eight and a long time ago in the past and they love it. Um, the trick is though, you've really got to take your time. If you're rushing this, I mean, fine, it's your art. It's going to look however you want, right? But just, you know, we're here to kind of relax. We're here to focus and be mindful about what we're doing. Okay, so I've got my rolling hills. Now I can actually start going in and adding some of the um, lines, they're almost like topographical lines, um, that go on top of the rolling hills. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. Um, my suggestion is you always kind of start and follow that top line a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect or even on both sides. Mine's not. It's a little narrower on one side and bigger on the other. Um, but make sure you're getting right to the edge of that frame. Okay, and if you wanna make a few little curves along the way, you can. Lovely, that deserves a drink. I think it looks great. Delicious. Um, so that's one way to do it. I'm going to show you another way that I think looks pretty cool and actually gives the illusion that the hills and mountains are really rolling, not only on the top part, but as they come towards you. So I'm going to show you that trick now. So what you do is you start the same. You kind of follow along the top to the edge, and then you pick a spot where you just kiss the lines together. And I'm going to do it in two spots here. And then as you go along, you're going to kiss that next line up to the other one you just added. And it will start to create a rolling illusion. Now, if you find your lines are getting really bunched together, you just stop. You, I'm going to kiss that edge and I'm going to let this one naturally come down. And when you're finished and you take a good look at it, you might find that you've got this illusion that you've got these rolling hills. It's pretty neat. Okay, um, I am going to time lapse this now for you so you don't have to sit here and watch me do the whole thing. And then I will set it up so I'll show you how to do the sky and then time lapse the rest of the sky. Make sure that you are taking your time and enjoying yourself, enjoying a beverage if you have one beside you. 
and uh, yeah, I'll check in with you in a sec. All right, so now we're ready to start our sky. Um, the trick with the sky is don't overthink it. We're gonna be creating circles. We're not drawing perfect circles here. In fact, this looks a lot better if your circles are imperfect, are imperfect, <laughs> and um, if you kind of move them around a bit so they're not in the exact same spot every time. And I'll show you what I, what I mean when I actually start drawing this. Um, so I usually start with one little circle, okay, and that's your center of your sun. That's what we're drawing, the circle sun. Um, and then you want to draw another circle around it, but it helps if that first little circle that you drew is a little closer to one of the edges. So you want to make sure that it's not totally even, almost like, I think of it like a ring toss. When a ring is tossed onto a peg and it kind of swirls around and uh, you can kind of see it swirling around the peg. I don't know if that makes sense. Whatever, it makes sense to me. Um, and you're just going to keep drawing more and more and more circles. Some of them may be closer together, so you may have some where it's a little thinner, um, the space between the two circles, and some where it's larger. It doesn't really matter. Um, your line shouldn't be too smooth either. You want to get a little bit of that kind of rough, sort of organic, sort of, I don't know, 70s texture to it. That's kind of what I'm thinking in my mind right now. Um, you may come to a point where you hit the edge and you have to just kind of keep going around it. That's great. You always want to extend your artwork out to the frame as well. Okay, don't just stop. So I am going to time lapse this for you. You can see the rest. And then in the end, we'll have a finished work of art. Go for it. All right, so here we are, we're finished. Um, your work maybe looks something like this. Maybe it looks totally different, whatever. The point is um, that you've created something and you've taken your time, you were purposeful about what you were doing and all you needed to do was just draw some lines. Um, this type of art works great for anything. I'm gonna show you a quick vid another day. Um, I'm not gonna actually explain things, but I'm gonna show you a similar activity you can use with just a ruler. And it's also very meditative. Um, it'll be kind of a quick time lapse another time so you can take a look at that if that's the type of art that you're into, just using lines. Um, so that's it for today. Hope you liked it. Um, I wanted to dedicate this episode to my friend Jessica Hill because she went out the other day, even though she's been really vigilant about staying at home to um, kind of stop the spread she decided to go out and donate blood, which is something that I think a lot of people maybe aren't thinking about right now. There are a lot of people out there who still need blood donations. So cheers to Jess for uh, doing something selfless during this time. And uh, maybe it will inspire some of you to do the same. So enjoy your drink, enjoy your evening, afternoon, morning, um, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Cheers.